in phase one, we did a, a phase one was a four part study, starting with a single ascending dose, uh, followed by a multiple ascending dose investigation. And in this part, we were um, investigating the, the proof of mechanism. And that mechanism was evidenced by um, the, uh, the data that showed that we were actually splicing Huntington RNA in healthy volunteers. So in a very stepwise fashion, we first dosed our healthy volunteers, um, uh, giving them one single dose and looking at the pharmacodynamic effect of that single dose. And then we escalated the dose through five cohorts. And through those five cohorts, we saw an increase and the percent of Huntington mRNA that was spliced. So from there, we went into a multiple dose where we dosed healthy volunteers for 14 days. And again, after the 14th day, we saw a very nice and robust uh, signal of uh, uh, splicing of Huntington mRNA. And then we investigated a third cohort where we uh, dosed healthy volunteers for 21 days. And in addition to seeing the mRNA splicing, we saw a very nice signal of Huntington protein lowering, which is ultimately what we're going for here in the treatment of Huntington's disease. So that uh, uh, clinical evidence uh, gave us a great deal of confidence to move this molecule forward from phase one investigation into phase two. So the PIVOT HD trial is investigating the efficacy of PTC518 in patients with the HD ISS stage two Huntington's disease. So these are people who are still fully functioning, they're still fully employed and doing very well. And the intent is to investigate the efficacy of PTC518 at stabilizing disease progression so that people can continue to have fully active functioning lives. The UHDRS has been around for several decades and has contributed pretty greatly to the knowledge that we have about um, Huntington's disease and tracking progression throughout the course of Huntington's disease. So um, I think it's been a very um, useful tool over the years for researchers. Um, when we talk about uh, strengths, we, we know that we have quite a bit of natural history data, so we can utilize those efforts on uh, patients that we treat with PTC518 and the outcomes of a clinical trial. Um, some of the shortcomings that we uh, have encountered here, and I think these are very well established, is the fact that as Amy Lee noted, we are going into um, a stage two population, which historically would be called pre-manifest or prodromal population. And there's, there's limitations to that particular tool in this population in that some of those measures don't actually progress. For example, uh, TFC, uh, the total functional capacity um, that's a part of the UHDRS, um, you know, will not, it's, again, um, you know, in this earlier stage, they're all TFC 13, which is the, the highest uh, capacity. So there's that's one. Um, additionally, I think some of the other measures, such as uh, the behavioral assessment, have been more or less um, superseded, if you will, um, in terms of their usefulness. And we've incorporated some of those elements in our clinical trial uh, just to ensure that we have the most robust measures uh, for, you know, for our trial 